Here's a question for you. How do you get 16 million direct male line descendants? Genghis Khan might have. How? I know what you're thinking, not that. My explanation is male sexual jealousy. So what is jealousy? Jealousy is a basic aversive emotion that motivates us to protect our relationship from breakup <laughs> and infidelity. Jealousy motivates mate guarding, vigilance, and mate retention tactics. Jealousy is painful. It's a dangerous emotion. It makes us possessive, and it makes us violent. But without jealousy, we wouldn't have pair bonding or love. So how did we humans become able to be jealous? Before we get on with the sciencey bits, Jealousy was evident in our culture, literature, and legal practices long before we knew anything about evolution or genetics, long before we had the rudiments of a basic science of emotions. Shakespeare wrote about the green-eyed monster. In the Bard's play, Othello, he tells us the story of how the king was tormented by the belief that his wife was being unfaithful. The king was driven mad by Iago's lies and machinations. Consider how we all are interested in whether or not it's true. Consider how we all understand how tormented the king is. Genghis Khan and his male line family members have 16 million male line descendants along the Silk Road. My explanation is this is due to male sexual jealousy. How? Wealth and power have to follow genes through history for such success. The Khan's genetic influence today is only possible due to cultural practices such as nepotism, succession of uh, power, and uh, transference of wealth. But you need to secure genetic bloodlines too. So what does this have to do with jealousy? Isn't it obvious? What motivates secure genetic bloodlines? The important questions are, where does the interest in who is the father come from? Where does the fear of being cuckolded, that is raising another man's child, why is that a human universal? Remember, Genghis and Shakespeare knew nothing of evolution or genetics. They couldn't even learn through the lifespan that being cuckolded is a problem because it's only a problem from a selection perspective. Think of it. There is no pain involved in being cuckolded. There is no way of learning the consequences of not being the father through the lifespan or through conditioning. The only answer is selection. Now, let's be a little provocative and get your emotions online. First, ladies, imagine that your boyfriend bought you jewelry for Christmas and a slightly more expensive piece for his closest collaborator at work. She really deserves it, he claims. Without her close collaboration, friendship, and emotional support, he would not have survived the autumn. They're not having sex. I know this as the omniscient narrator of the story. <laughs> Is it okay? What may she get? May she even get anything? Next, gentlemen. Imagine your girlfriend got drunk at a party in the weekend and had sex with a guy there. She's not in love with them. She doesn't plan to leave you. They just had sex. Is it all right? Usually when I tell this story to my students, I get hissy sounds at this point. <laughs> so what is the basic science behind these sex differences? The major biological theory is Triver's parental investment theory, which explains differences between the genders and behavior based upon minimal investment in offspring by males and females in a specific species. David Buss and Dave Schmidt have formulated a specific application of this theory for humans. 
and in our research, it's the best predictive theory of modern human sexual behavior. Specific features of our reproductive physiology lay the grounds for our sexual and jealousy psychology. This is summed up in the saying, mummy's baby, daddy's maybe. I'll repeat it because it's important. Mummy's baby, daddy's maybe. Most women know who the mother of their child is. It's hard to give birth and not know. <laughs> Most men just cannot know. Therefore, men seek maximum paternal certainty. If their girlfriend has sex with other men, he might become an evolutionary dead end. Women, on the other hand, seek commitment and emotional investment in their children. It's very rare among mammals, actually only about 5% of them do, but men actually do invest in their presumed offspring. Therefore, seeking commitment in partners is important for women. These basic differences, according to Buss, give us two different types of jealousy. Emotional jealousy, which is a fear of losing investment and commitment, and sexual jealousy, which is the fear of one's partner engaging in sex with others. And these two forms of jealousy are therefore sex differentiated. And no one actually knew about this before Buss's original studies. Now, this theory has met with resistance and uh, criticism, but my colleague Mons Bendixson and I have researched jealousy considering different samples and different um, facets. Some of our findings, a robust finding, men report high degree of sexual jealousy than women do. Women report high degree of emotional jealousy than men do. The sex difference is primarily found during reproductive years, and the sex difference is greatest in Scandinavian countries. We do not find an effect of a prior history of being cheated or, being, uh, or, or cheating upon one's partner. We find the same results with continuous and discontinuous measures. And in general, women report the greatest amount of jealousy. Also, we only find the sex difference in heterosexual comparisons. Lastly, in our recent research on the forgiveness of infidelity, we find that men have no clue as to how distressed women are by emotional infidelity. So most of our findings support the evolutionary perspective. But the three things we have to discuss. First, why are the sex differences greatest in Scandinavian countries? Many people believe there are no fundamental sex differences. Further, there's an expectation that sex differences should become smaller in more gender egalitarian countries. But this is not true. There are some basic sex differences, and some of these are exaggerated by gender egalitarian countries. One example is the Scandinavian gender equality paradox, where we find that Norwegian women choose more traditional professions than women in less egalitarian countries. In the current research, the prediction was that we would find a greater sex difference in Norway because of greater paternal investment in children. Has jealousy evolved? Many critics challenge me to prove that a specific mental mechanism has evolved. For jealousy, we can actually turn this around. Could jealousy not evolve? Consider our common ancestor with modern promiscuous chimps. Without pair bonding, without father investment, there's no jealousy, but there is neither love. Through our evolutionary history, we changed. We started falling in love. We started bonding, and fathers started investing in children. The two important questions are, what would happen to women who did not secure investment in their children? And what would happen to men who weren't interested in who their partners were having sex with. Those naive of this would be outcompeted by the jealous. Finally, what must have evolved? We have evolved to seek to avoid losing investment in a long range of different 
relationships. The important thing is, in most of these cases, we can learn through the lifespan the negative consequences of losing investment. Skinner, the founder of radical behaviorism, pointed out that if there is no feedback mechanism to condition behavior, natural selection is the explanation of adaptive behavior. Sexual infidelity doesn't come with a feedback system. There is no pain involved in being cuckolded. Those people who were naively cuckolded through evolutionary history are merely not our ancestors. They're merely, without knowing it, evolutionary dead ends. So where does this interest in whose side who come from? Why do we devise rules based upon bloodlines? Why even care? The answer is selection. Those distressed by their partner cheating on them, those who were motivated to prevent this, simply outcompeted those who did not care. Jealousy is a normal, basic emotion, despite being horrible. What makes you and your partner jealous might be very different. If jealousy is exaggerated, you might want to seek couples therapy. However, without, without jealousy, pair bonding and father investment would not be evolutionary stable strategies. Love demands jealousy. My claim is that the basic adaptation here, what has evolved, is the male sexual jealousy module. It has to evolve. It's found cross-culturally and across time. It's created cultural practices. And it cannot be learnt through the lifespan. So how do you get 16 million descendants? You need sexual jealousy and father investment. And the one does not come without the other. Male sexual jealousy is fundamental to hereditary rule and is therefore the foundation of empires. Thank you.